Brent Allen here. Thanks everybody for watching and listening. One of my favorite actors we are talking with today. I am so excited. Trisha O'Kelly or Patricia O'Kelly. People might know you as the new adventures of old Christine, the Mick, the list goes on and on. Thanks for your time. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Don't ever call me Patricia again. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> just I, uh, dropped the, I dropped the pa. Okay. A few years ago. Fine. No, it that's always good. felt like um I was in trouble whenever my parents I know the pa in front of the Trisha. I'd be like, oh God, what did I do? What did I do? I yeah. know. I totally get it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited. Now I have to just confirm the Instagram and social medias, those are yours, correct? They are mine. I'm just not very good at it. I don't. Well, the only reason I ask is because your Instagram is great. Your byline says I play bitches on film and television. That is true. Is that not true? (laughs) I figured like that was like the most concise way to, to describe who I am. I play bitches on TV. That's what I do. Well, I have to ask you because you have been a part of so many great projects, but so you did clearly put that on your yourself. So that leads me to my first question. Okay. When you get pitched for roles or you audition for roles, is that just a sweet spot for you as a storyteller? Or is that just sort of what you've gotten presented with throughout your career? Because you are very talented. Thank you. Um, You know, it's funny because I, I, when I started um, in my twenties, I was always cast as sort of like the quirky, neurotic kind of friend or sidekick or whatever, awkward, you know, quirky, whatever, like self-conscious. And then in my thirties, um, yeah, I just sort of started kind of booking a lot more of like the wealthy (laughs) bitchy women. Um, and then, oh, Christine was kind of like the ultimate of, you know, that character. Um, and I love, love, love playing those roles. They're so fun, you know, because you just have zero filter. These characters have zero filter. They say oftentimes what other people are thinking, but too afraid to say it. Um, And oftentimes what nobody would dare think or say, (laughs) but they're really, really, really fun to play. Um, So yeah, I mean, I guess I would say it was my, my sweet spot now. Um, You know, over the last 10, 15 years, it seems to be the majority of what I'm, what I'm playing. Now, you have done a lot of different things. I also think about Poodle from the Mick. I mean, definitely that yeah. was such a good show. And yeah. I well, wish you know, Caitlin's that... my best friend. I don't know if you know this. Okay. I did Caitlin. not know that. Yeah. yeah, She's just so talented. And I mean, all the things that you all do. And when you get a chance to work together, that's yeah. has to be fun to work with one of your best friends. Oh my God. So fun. And you know, I had to um, audition, um, <laughs> but I had to audition and they almost didn't give it to me because um, we look too much like sisters, which I okay, thought was I could see good. that. But, you know, but but we would, you know, in our off screen life, you know, whenever we were, were out in public or a restaurant or whatever, people would always ask us if we were sisters. And so when this audition came up, I was like, well, perfect, you know. Um, and I'm like, no, you look too much. That's so that explains the the brown wig that I had to wear just kind of. Interesting, because when even though you knew her, yeah, and I'm imagining there was maybe a conversation where it's like I'm doing this new show. Mm-hmm. Would you be interested in being a part? But of course, there's that whole network piece. Yeah, where you have to go and screen test and audition. Um, it was a little different. It was funny because we were we were getting our nails done, <laughs> um, okay. a couple months beforehand, and she was talking to me about this project. And I don't think she ever told me the name of it, but she was telling me about it. She was telling me about the Chernin brothers and um, and how she didn't want it to be too much like Sweet D. And I was all excited for her. And I'm like, you should, you should definitely do it. It sounds amazing. And, you know, and then and then the audition came up separate from her. I was I was shooting something. I think I was shooting um, Two Broke Girls. OK. And and um, an appointment came up. And I was like, the Mick, that sounds familiar. The Mick, what is that? Like, I I, I had no idea because it was a pilot at this point. It hadn't aired or anything. And I was like, the Mick, the Mick. And then I kind of read on and it said Caitlin, Caitlin Olsen. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. So so it was completely separate of her. She was in the room when I auditioned, which is always weird when you're auditioned in front of a friend. But um, but anyway, it was just so fun. I mean, not only did I love the show, 
but I loved the character. And then, yeah, getting to work with your best friend. I just hung out in her trailer. It's pretty great. That's a lot of fun. So yeah. when you are looking at roles and going through your career and deciding what you want to do next, yeah. is there one particular thing or maybe a few things I don't necessarily know if they're non-negotiables, but things that are just important to you as a storyteller that you look for in a character. I mean, obviously a lot of these characters were generalizing and it's joking and it's fun, but they are all different in some different way. Yeah. I think layers, um, the character has to have layers. Like I, you know, even with old Christine, I mean, it was sort of when we started on that show, the characters were just, in my opinion, like just sort of one dimensional bitches. <laughs> Can I swear, by the way? You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Um, well, I mean, I'm just saying bitches is, uh, there are worse things that could possibly come out. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, it. we knew, and by we, I mean me and Alex Cap, who played Lindsay on the show, also one of my very, very best friends. Um, we knew that there had to be something more to these women other than just being bitches. And so, you know, what usually happens with bullies um, is that they're they're super insecure themselves and it makes them feel better to put other people down. And so, you know, that's always sort of the layer behind the bitchy, I think. Um, and <laughs> that's I a good way that to I'm put able it, yeah. to, yeah. I mean, like there's a reason why they're doing this. Um, they're not just born bitchy. They're, they feel bad about themselves. There's something going on in their personal lives, but like all bullies they take it off on, you know, they take it out on some weaker people. Um, so yeah, layers are very important. Um, you know, I think I would just like to, I'm cool playing this character until the day I die because it's so fun, this type of character. Um, I would just like to get on a show that lasts a little bit longer, you know? Kind of <laughs> That's like the dream at this point. Yeah. I'm a perpetual guest star slash recurring actor. And, and, and so it would be nice to just be able to kind of really sink my teeth into a character and for you know a, a few seasons or longer watch their arc and um so I guess that would be my goal and new Christine too was a big deal because that was the show that broke the Seinfeld curse I think yeah yeah it was Julia sure. Louise because all of these actors had done shows but they didn't go very long or they didn't get Emmy nominated yeah. And that was a big deal because even other cast members, Wanda Sykes, I mean, that was like a really big deal for everybody because it lasted for so long and it was yeah. so funny. You, you've right. done so many fun projects in my view, and I am nobody, I feel you've That's had very measurable success uh, and have yeah. done so well at it. But when you started out in the business and, was it something that you were attracted to or that you were drawn to or did, how did that journey begin for you? As an actor, you mean to become As an, an actor? actor? Yeah. Um, so when I was in fifth grade, um, I uh, was cast in a little school production of Huckleberry Finn. Okay. I'm sorry, Tom Sawyer. And I was cast as Huckleberry Finn. Oh, that's cool. Probably one of the earliest examples of genderless casting ever. Um, and I don't, I, I, I remember just getting laughs. Um, and I thought that's fantastic. I want more of that. And that was sort of the first time I got the bug. Okay. And then um, I joined like a theater group in seventh and eighth grade where we did like musicals, acting, singing, dance. And that was really fun. And then I think I got my first agent when I was 16. And so I was living in Chicago. So I was just doing mainly commercials and whatnot. Um, and then I went to college in at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Okay. Never in a million years did I think that I could make a living as an actor. I always knew I wanted to do it, um, but I figured I needed a backup plan, and so I, so I majored in um, television and film production to learn a little bit about the other side of the camera, huh? which I think, you know, I think makes me maybe a, a more patient actor, a more understanding actor. I get what's going on on the other side. Um, I get that it's not all about me, you know. Um, so I got out of school and I was like, what do I want to do? And I thought about broadcast journalism for a while. I don't know. It was just, and then it finally was like, no, I want to act. So I have to at least give it a try, you know. So to answer your question, very circuitous way, um, 
fifth grade was the first time I, I thought I really wanted to do this. Right out of college is when I decided I was going to try to do it for real. So, wow. It's always yeah. fun for me. And I think our listeners and viewers too, because the world that you are involved in is just so different than what yeah. most people. And I feel like I sound like a broken record when I say that, because I say it almost every time because it's just not the same that what most people are used to. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And I think, you know, I have a group of friends who have been my friends since I was 12, probably. And we take a girl's trip every year. And and I think probably at first they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, but it's, I mean, you know, eventually when you're in the world of an actor for long enough, you kind of get how it works. They know what pilot season is. They know what testing means. They know what negotiating a contract like they they know all the but for I think for most people it's like it's it's almost like we get paid to do dress up but it, it is a business you know and doctors don't just you know decide they want to be a doctor and so buy some golf clubs and a stethoscope you know like there's a lot of training that goes into it there's a lot of studying there's a lot of working toward it yeah. a lot of paying your dues as a resident etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's the same thing with acting you know, you're the yeah. second person that I've interviewed over the course of this show yeah. that has said that Amy Peets, mm -hmm. she said that recently too, when I had right. her on, we were talking about her life and career and shows that go and start and stop and, right. and right. you know, the office was probably one of the most unorthodox interviews that she had done for a role because they just brought her in and spoke to her about her life and career and what her interests were. And then they created a character based on that. It's yeah. so weird. Like it's so cool though. It is. Yeah. yeah. Like she knew that she was a potential love interest, mm -hmm. but didn't know for how long, maybe a few episodes, maybe a season, maybe this or that, but it was just so different. I want to yeah. ask you because obviously on this same line of conversation, is there a show that you auditioned for that didn't go that you thought you had, or maybe you were up against somebody else that got the part? A thousand. <laughs> okay. uh, first of all, I auditioned for Rachel on Friends. Yes. I had read that somewhere. Yeah. I was going to ask you that next, but I didn't know yeah. if that was I, like one of those urban It was legends. one of those that I, it didn't go far. I was still living in Chicago at the time. So I, I okay. literally- Put myself on tear you know went to my agency in Chicago to audition for it so it's not like I ever had a chance um but you know it was definitely something that I would have loved to have gotten that said they could not have cast that show any more perfectly like you know I mean it's just that was ordained you know um there were a bunch of shows that I you know shot pilots for that didn't get picked up and it was a bummer um, there was one show that I shot the pilot for. It got picked up. I was hoping that I didn't get picked up along with it. Oh, and wow. that happened. And I was thrilled. <laughs> I was like, that was the worst experience of my life. Um, uh, horrible. Um, and then there were a lot of times where, you know, there, I was devastated. I tested for something and devastated that I didn't get it. And then the next, like, for example, I tested for a show, uh, with Julie Bowen. It was a pilot with Julie Bowen before Modern Family, I guess. Okay. Yeah, before Modern Family, um, to play her best friend in something. And I desperately wanted it. Um, I had met her years before. I loved her. Um, I loved the character, quirky, neurotic best friend. That was another one of those kind of characters. And then I didn't get it. And I was like crying, desperately, you know, upset. And then the next day I got old Christine. So, I mean, yeah. And that was a massive show and you just swung so for the fun. fences on that one. It was so fun and it was such a great set. And I met Alex, who's just like family to me now. My, my kids call her father, Alex. <laughs> they like Think of her as, you know, family and her daughter literally lives in my back house as we speak. I'm really close with her kids. And, and so, you know, had I not done that show, I wouldn't have met Alex Cap. And then it had to be life-changing to a degree because it was such a big show. Yeah, it was. Well, and also I had such a girl crush on Julia forever because I was such a huge Seinfeld fan. And so, so there were so many, that, that girl crush never went away. Like the awe 
with which I watched her work at the beginning, like sitting at table reads like this, you know, like watching her work and that never went away in those five seasons. Um, and if anything, I just became more of a fan. And there were times where we'd be shooting in front of the audience, like tape night. And I'd be in a scene with Julia and she'd say something and I'd be like, just watching her. And they'd be like, oh, sorry, I'm, I know, I'm just, I'm just enjoying the they're show. Like, 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 like I would get lost in her character and forget <laughs> I forget that I was actually acting in a scene with her and had lines to say. <laughs> so, so I have to say, in all honesty, and I don't want to sound icky, but I feel the same way about Caitlin because yeah. I've been so fascinated with her career. Yeah. And we've tried booking her, but it's always busy filming this, that, or yeah. the other. So yeah. I, I get it because you you watch these people and you just, you get, that's just a testament and you, present company included, is to your ability and your your talent because you just get sucked into what's happening around you and you don't think about it as acting. You know what I'm saying? And it's yeah. just like so yeah. obsessive. That's good. Yeah, Caitlin is another one. I, I mean, she's just absolutely genius. She's just genius. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't care that some of her stuff is inappropriate. I've been showing my kids her work for, for years because they know her and love her. And I'm like, you just need to see her work. Like, you just need to see her work. You'd love her even more. She's such a genius. I and love hearing those stories. Well. Yeah, that's yeah. so fun. Yeah. And she's so just, amazing. she's got the biggest heart of anybody I've ever met in my life. I love it. Well, this journey you've been on has just been so crazy and fascinating. And I love hearing these stories because I feel like it encourages people whether they're pursuing acting or podcasting or whatever the case might be, it just, I think the big message is that you just have to work hard and yeah. do it and go, okay, even though I might not get paid for this, or it might not be what I want. Yeah. It's just for the pure passion or art of what you're doing. Is that a fair right. assessment? Absolutely. And, 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 you know, I, I'm also, I don't know, I'm also a professional organizer. Um, okay. I love I've that. Been, I've been doing that since, 2001 or something like that on and off like when I'm on series or whatever I can't do organizing as much when I'm when I'm not acting I'm organizing when I'm not organizing I'm acting but my point is I am deeply passionate about both um and I love that I have the chance to do both of them and like for me like organizing is my sort of form of meditation if I'm stressed about something I'm like I'll just clean a closet I'll just or you know um and so so I keep doing both of those things, even when, you know, even there's a lot of rejection as an actor. Um, and I've always said, like, when I stop loving it, I will quit. You know what I mean? Like, I, it, the, the fact of the matter is, I, I love it. So it's worth it. Um, even if I'm not working all the time, even if it doesn't always pay all the bills, um, it's still something that I love to do. So why give it up? I love as long, it as, I, I as, long as you have like you're you're bringing an income somewhere else you know like often I love it and I see that to your left there those pull out or no your other stage right oh, yeah yes those are all my organizing supplies do you see the the, the drawer organizers do that there? caught my attention right away <laughs> your background yeah. your room that you're in is very aesthetic like I love yeah. it this is my yeah. office yeah, but the organizing, I'm actually, I just literally today turned in my the first draft of my book. I'm writing a book on organizing that's coming out in January. Well, we'll have to have you back for that. Okay, I would bomb. love that. I would love that. Yeah. So as we wrap here, I do want to ask, like you've just, you mentioned that you have, you know, you've done reoccurring, you've been yeah. series regular, you've done all these different things. But is there one project, if you had the opportunity to go back and revisit or redo, would you consider it? Damn, Brett, that's a good question. Thank you. Meaning like, because I wasn't happy with my performance. Yeah, like if you didn't get to develop a character or let's say new Christine, they came back and decided to run that on a streamer now because the yeah. options were easier to do it other than yeah. like network television. I think that was CBS, right? ABC. That was CBS. Yeah. Okay, CBS. And we didn't get to say goodbye either. Like we were no, canceled. You, did. you guys got a jacked, which finale. I felt yeah. like that was really, but that's yeah. the business that you're in. Unfortunately. It's the business. And it was all, it was also 
that was what happened with us the, the entire run of the show. We were just kind of getting bounced all around the network and it was really hard to find an audience that would find us every season on a different time or day. Um, so for sure, I'd love to go back and finish that and kind of wrap up that character and that world. Um, the the Mick was canceled way too soon as well. Oh. Um, God, I would just love to do that again. Um, and then there's another one. This is, but I really loved being on Devious Maids. Oh, um, God, yeah. You know, and that was, I think I only did three episodes or something, but it was such a fun character and such a fun show that I kind of wish that I could have had more time on that and like, more, like you know, more to do with that character, sure. you know? Um, and then finally, feel more girls so that I could redeem myself and people wouldn't hate me for that. <laughs> as, oh, the bitch my who, Lanta. as the bitch yeah. who temporarily took Luke away from more life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, we can't not talk about that because that's, yeah. people hate your character for that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I'm learning that I wasn't the most hated. I thought I was the most hated, but no, apparently there were others that were bitchier, so to speak, yeah. in the television world. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but that would be fun to go back there and like, I don't know, become best friends with Lorelai, and I don't know, like do something so that I don't know. In the world of streaming, people. anything's possible. That's true. So that brings me that leads me to a follow up question. Because these all these characters are, I don't want to use the word typecasting, but yeah. they are similar in nature, but very different. Yeah. Is there a part of you that you find that you just connect well with some of these characters or maybe something that you learned about yourself from these characters that made you go, okay, maybe I am a little bit like this and maybe I want to change it. And, and that could be anything, a no. part of those characters. I, I don't. No. Um, I mean, I like to think I'm the opposite of who those well, women are. Well, maybe not are. like them, but yeah. maybe something that you've learned about yourself that you go, you know what, this is, maybe I am sort of like this. Maybe it's some of the good things about the characters and not just the negative. Um, yeah. I mean, well, I think it says something that I, <laughs> that I really find it's funny that these these characters treat people that way. I mean, I I think it's flippant hilarious, and and that is sort of my sense of humor in okay. in real life. There you go. Um, that could be it. That's you know, it's that we're like, I just don't like people. I just want to be. I, I just want to be closed off in my house, and you know, and ugh, my kids ugh, like still on the fence about having them, and they're twelve and fourteen. Like <laughs> like they're still, you know, I I, I find it. humor in in the um what's a good word in the uh how everything annoys me <laughs> well i i appreciate you hanging out today because i was looking at your interview history you haven't you've done some things you yeah. know that are like i would say tier one as far as like big television mm -hmm. interviews but you haven't done a lot of this and so when <laughs> i reached out to danny your publicist i was like i don't see her doing a lot but we would love yeah. to talk with her. And he said, absolutely. We'll see what we can make happen. So thank you for your time. Oh, of course. Thank I you feel for... honored and blessed really that you chose to hang out for a little bit. Of course. Yeah. I'm so honored that you invited me. I really appreciate it. And I'll plan and... a good one for Caitlin. Yeah. And new Christine. Yeah. Uh, that got me through the pandemic. So I love that. Really? Yeah. Well, you was... should go. You should go on YouTube and look at the uh, videos that Alex and I, Lindsay from Oh Christine, that we made during the pandemic because she was living in my back house at the time. So we made like 50 videos of Love it. Like, short little YouTube videos. So yeah, that could have gotten you through the like, pandemic as well. <laughs> well, I know you have other things that you're working on. So I'm excited. The book will have you back when that releases. Okay, and uh, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations, Trisha. Thank uh, you so much. On things. <laughs> and uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brett. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Absolutely. Thank you.